Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is November 15th of 2018. And the camera is over here, the Logitech Brio uh, <coughs> camera, which will do 4K, but I don't have it in 4K right now because it's just uh, up here. There we go. It's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice camera. It's not worth, I think it, I'm not sure what the price is now. I think I paid like $170 for USB. I've got another tripod over here. And I'm still thinking about using the G8 camera on that and using the, uh, I don't know though. This seems like it works out so well. Keep it simple. Um, I'm using ManyCam to record my desktop and then the Logitech is just running up there. <clears throat> I could actually embed the Logitech camera into the screen of the Manicam program, then you wouldn't see the things on the screen. The just be an embedded video, but maybe that's a project I can do sometime. I was in Florida when they had the election that was Al Gore. Bush or whatever and so my vote was actually actually needed in the Florida election um, then didn't do any good but I, it, it was needed I'm in Texas now and there's not much uh, I voted but there's not much reason to vote and uh, if you're a Democrat down here right now uh, Florida is a mess. I love the weather. Love the weather. And that was... <clears throat> I moved to Orlando, Florida in 2000. I was there a while. Then I came back to... Uh, or not came back, but I came to Texas, Carrollton, Texas, uh, to be with family. And because my grandson was, was uh, no, my son was with me and he wanted to come back to be with family. And then I ended up going to um, Orlando, Florida. And, but anyway, in 2000 when I went to Florida, I just loved Florida, but I was in Orlando. But we made some trips over to Titusville, where the uh, facility was for launching space shuttles and what have you. Then I came back to Texas and then went back to, went to Miami. And uh, loved Miami. Just wonderful, except for the fact that Miami is controlled by Cuban, you know, people that came from Cuba, and they sort of run it like, like I guess they ran things in Cuba. And I don't speak Spanish. I wish I had tried over the years. I have hearing loss in both ears. Uh, just not good at <clears throat> languages. I tried Russian, Swedish, different things. Um, with no luck. <laughs> I do not have any aptitude for languages. I wish I did. But that's the problem. In Miami, everybody speaks Spanish. They walk up to you. It doesn't matter whether you, you know, look. I can understand if you walk up to somebody and they look Hispanic. 
uh, yeah, I guess you start talking to them. And, spe- but, and then there were lots of businesses, especially like a McDonald's or something like that. If I was got there early, and I like to get there early, uh, you go in and <laughs> the, the employee there who speaks, who's bilingual, the employee there who speaks English may not have shown up right away. Maybe a few minutes late getting to, you know, he's one of those people that gets to work, you know, doesn't get there when the door opens, he comes a few minutes late. And uh, I'd have difficulty ordering. So I didn't like that. But my God, the beaches were fantastic and there's always something going on in Miami. Uh, People coming, of course it was election time then and uh, so but Florida was a mess uh, let's see I have no idea who Kim Porter is 49 years of age uh, Still don't know who she is. 49, I'm 77. 49 is too young to die. <clears throat> At my age, you know, a lot of people, when somebody passes away, people say, oh, that's, you know, too soon. Oh, you know, whatever. <clears throat> it, when I start to say, if I passed away, uh, when I pass away, nobody's going to say, "Oh, that was that was unexpected." That was, uh, you know, because at, at that age they kind of think, you know, well, hey, lived a long life. Uh, judge has postponed making the decision on that CNN lawsuit against the White House and Trump and all the other people who denied uh, Jim Acosta, the CNN, his uh, press pass. Uh, There's a procedure, I think there's a group actually of of news media people who decide who gets a pass, who doesn't get a pass, or whatever, and it's been set up, I guess, for a long time. <clears throat> of course, the Secret Service, you know, has input into that. I mean, the, the this group, the news group, can't, you know, approve somebody, you know, can't approve Bin Laden or whatever, you know, even my pre- you know, because the Secret Service enters into it. <clears throat> but their input should be, you know, if somebody's dangerous to the president or whatever. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, what CNN, even Fox, by the way, has entered in on the side of CNN and other news media saying, you know, in this lawsuit. Uh, I think, <clears throat> you know, that the president or whoever shouldn't be able to deny a reporter, a legitimate reporter, uh, access to, you know, the uh, press conference. Of course, you have to have, you can't have everybody in there that wants to be in there. You have to make some decisions. But I think definitely the president was wrong and he's you know by yanking press passes and then when he was asked about it doubling down on it saying oh there may there'll be others that'll be you know revoked i don't think he should be able to do that but on the other hand uh it's my understanding i think that when you have this press pass you're able to get in and go other places other than where we see on tv you know, the questions and 
being asked and what have you. I, I think uh, if a president wants to, that they should be able to deny, say, yeah, you, you know, oh, no, you can, sure, you can, you can come to the press conference, you can be admitted or whatever, but you can't show up with your card and go into other areas. So that's be my feeling on the thing. Of course, I'm not too fond of the press. I don't think any of us are really. <clears throat> because in my life, I've seen some of the outrageous things that they do, you know, locally. You know, driving the wrong way uh, on a street or uh, pushing yourself into a situation or I worked hospital security and <clears throat> we had a parking lot that, you know, a gate and you drive in this way and then there was a gate where of course you drive out of the parking lot and the park we had a I was in charge of, I was a supervisor on that shift and I had a parking lot I had X number of uh, security officers I was in charge of and I had uh, X number of parking lot attendants I was in charge of and I had one assigned to this parking lot so he was right there at the gate and for the exit gate, there was a gigantic sign bigger than a bigger than the parking lot attendant, you know, drawn with a hand up and everything saying, stop, do not enter, severe tire damage, because we had these things that were up spikes or whatever. And uh, the news media had been called down to cover baseball players or football players or something that were at the hospital for some reason. And uh, the way they came down and drove in the exit, well, of course, before, you know, the parking lot attendant was waving them, you know, himself. And then there's a big sign where they drove in and uh, blew out one or two of their tires or whatever. And that's actually the only time that we had other people occasionally I mean, they came in so fast or whatever. We had other people that hit those things and didn't lose a tire, I don't believe. And uh, just that attitude side. Oh. Why is Trump so angry? <laughs> uh. Well, I never, <clears throat> I just went to a community, two different community colleges. I never even got an associate's degree. But my God, if I knew you could be a Dartmouth professor and give alcohol to your students and rape them, well, man, I'd have gone to a four-year college and uh, got a degree and became a professor or something. I didn't know that was one of the perks. I don't think they mentioned that. Man, I tell you, I was in California, well, I was in California when I was a baby for like, until I was four. I remember a little tiny bit, little, an earthquake, a song, a few things, a cat we had, stuff, but <clears throat> then I was out there for the uh, premiere of the movie that, or the, that I was in, BBS the documentary. I went out there for that. You didn't know I was a movie star. Um, beautiful state, but my God. Fires, mudslides. Everything. Nineteen-year-old dies after inhaling a deodorant. Don't do that kind of stuff. A deodorant. Apparently put a blanket over his head or something and was inhaling. I guess that's kind of rare. Don't do it. Don't inhale any of that kind of stuff. My God. Oh, my God. Uh, I worked at a small hospital small town 
it was winter time, two or three o'clock in the morning, nothing going on, no patients in the emergency room. Anyway, a few blocks away, I think it was two or three guys. I know it was at least two. They were, and it was winter time. It was cold. There was snow on the ground and I think snow in the air. And these three guys are inside a car, two or three o'clock in the morning, inhaling gasoline fumes and smoking. Smoking. And I forget how many, I know we sent, the one guy came in in bad shape. Bad, bad burns. And I know we sent him, I think by, I think we sent him by a helicopter. Can't remember for sure. Might have been, weather might have been too bad for the helicopter. Can't remember now, but I know we sent him to a burn center. I'm not sure about if we sent others. Can't remember, but come on, don't be stupid. Oh, people do stuff. <clears throat> Dozens of Notre Dame students took a knee during the national anthem. Here's why. I, I did look at this. This is interesting. It's a picture of Hitler with a young girl who is, uh, her grandmother was Jewish or whatever. Anyway, I guess her and her mother were outside of uh, Hitler's, wherever he was. Uh, home in Bavaria, Germany to celebrate Hitler's birthday. Well, it was also the girl's birthday. Same birth date. Not the same year. <laughs> and uh, he came out and hugged her and gave her an autographed picture and all kinds of stuff. But uh, and he kept in touch and then, of course, uh, who was it? Uh, Eichmann. No, that's the uh, Hitler. Anyway, one of Hitler's, I can't remember the, cut off their visiting with him. And because he kept in touch, they exchanged letters and what have you. But uh, he liked her because she had the same birthday or whatever, and he knew she was not of pure blood. Uh, I see she died. The girl died at the age of 17 of spinal polio. Uh, I'm not saying Hitler was a nice guy, by the way. I actually knew a doctor, nice guy, and he loved Germany. He wasn't German, he loved Germany. And he made a couple comments, before, you know, of uh, Hitler wasn't so bad. And uh, 22-year-old basketball player dies of leukemia. Two thousand five hundred and fifty US citizens have applied for asylum in Canada. I'd be tempted, you know, for the first time in my life. For the first time in my life, I really, I think the United States is, it's going to be the decline, you know, we had the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. I think, I, I never thought, you know, because of our system of government, checks and balances, uh, thing of compromise, that 
our system was set up that way. And it's Newt or whatever that, and other people in that clique that came and it became, because I worked with people who were Republican and, oh, no compromise. No compromise. But that's the way our system works. That's the, how the, system, the entire system works on balance of power, respect for the courts, uh, belief that our electoral system works and everything. And now things have gone to hell in a handbasket. And I'm afraid the United States... And the sad thing is, I'm 77 years old, so when I pass away, I'll, that'll be my opinion that uh, the grand system that we have is going to fail and we're going to go down the toilet. And, you know, if something happens and we get turned around, I, I won't know it. I won't be up there floating around in a cloud saying, oh, I was mistaken when I was 77 because uh, everything is fixed. So, um, story time? Story time. Uh, I went to a public kindergarten. Then I went to a Catholic grade school, holy name, from the first grade through the fourth grade. But actually I had to take the second grade twice. I flunked the second grade. So then I went to St. Vincent's grade school for the fifth grade. And the sixth and seventh grade were actually one year in Catholic schools in the Kansas City area. After I got out of grade school, a few years later, the state, I guess the state, maybe this, anyway, ruled that no, you couldn't, uh, Catholic schools couldn't do that, so they, they actually had to have a separate, you know, seventh grade. So I was there for two years, uh, fifth grade and sixth, seventh grade. Um, the fourth grade, I believe, is the year in that summer that I went to Georgia for three months. And remember, this is before the civil rights and I, I want to do, I got some pictures, and I want to do a video talking about that, because I was there during the time of segregation. I was there when colored water fountains and colored and white, you know, wet restrooms, chain gangs, the whole bit. So I'd like to do a little video on that and talk about that. Let me talk about when I was at uh, St. Vincent's grade school. That's the grade school that my father and all his brothers, seven brothers and six and uh, three sisters, they all graduated from that school, grade school. My father, when he left St. Vincent's, when he graduated from grade school, he went with his friend uh, Huber, they were in the Boy Scouts together, and they were same age, same school, went together to the seminary. Uh, Huber stayed at the cemetery, or cemetery. That, was that a, a uh, unconscious? Uh, stayed at the uh, seminary. And Huber went on to become a Catholic priest. My father wrote home that he didn't want to be there and he wanted to come home and his parents told him, no, you're going to be the, I guess, the priest from our family, you know. So he ran away from the seminary and hitchhiked home or whatever. Uh, so we ended up back in that parish 
and Father Huber, who went with my dad, he ended up as the pastor of St. Vincent's. So, anyway, um, you, at St. Vincent's, you could go home for lunch or you had to eat in the cafeteria. Now, you didn't have to eat the cafeteria food. You could bring a sack lunch. Or I guess a lunch pay or something, if they had them then. Um, so that was a rule. You, you could go home for lunch or you could eat in the cafeteria. I, however, did not want to go home. Both my parents worked. And... Uh, Right across the street, 31st and uh, St. Vincent was 31st and Flora in Kansas City, Missouri. But right across the street, on, right there across from the cafeteria at 31st and Paseo was a drugstore. So I went over there every day for lunch and I had a malt and I believe a hot dog. And so I would just be sitting there on the stool having it. And I was sitting there one day, I forget her name, the principal, sister, something or other. I could look on my graduation thing from grade school because her signature would be there. And that's when the nuns also wore their habits, their robes, with their beads, their hats. I don't know how, come, I don't know how those hats didn't. I guess it wasn't really a hat. I don't know how they didn't take off with those things or get blown away. But I'm looking, sitting there on the uh, stool, having my hot dog and my malt, like I did every day for lunch. And uh, looking out the window, I saw the principal coming very fast, <laughs> heading for the drugstore. And I thought, this is not good. And she came in, grabbed me by the ear, and pulled me out of the drugstore over to the church where she told Father Huber, who went to school with my father, what I had done. And he slammed me up against the wall of the church. It didn't hurt me. But I kind of thought, hey, you know, I didn't say anything. I thought, hey, you know, you went to school with my dad. But uh, he told me not to do that anymore. So then I, every day for lunch, I uh, started walking towards home. But halfway to home, there was a little family-owned donut shop. I'm not sure they even had places like Dunkin' Donut or places like that then. A lot of family-owned places. So I popped in there every day. I had root beer out of a glass bottle, ice cold. That was the best root beer I've ever had. And I had a bunch of glazed donuts. And then I went back to school. And I didn't get caught for that. So the moral of this story is, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, Father Huber, I graduated and I, I didn't, I wasn't going to church, I didn't go to church, I didn't know that, I didn't know that he had been sent to Dallas from St. Vincent's. And uh, didn't find out until John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And my father and I were sitting there watching television. And uh, Father Huber came out of the hospital and the news media went up to him and uh, 
ask him, you know, and he said that he had given, you know, how was the president? And he said he had given the last rites to uh, President Kennedy and that President Kennedy had died. And that's how the word went out then on CBS and shortwave radio and everything around the world. A Catholic priest, you know, has said that uh, John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy, has died. I wonder if I should change. Let's see, I think this will work. Yes. Oops. I guess it won't work as long as I'm using. What good is that if it won't work if you can't make changes to, you can make changes before. Let's see if I click widescreen what happens here. Nothing. Go to standard. Bummer. Well, let's quickly go to YouTube. It's almost midnight here in Fort Worth, Texas. I've got uh, 2,641 subscribers. Uh, there's a number of things that YouTube people c can do that's based on how many subscribers you have. And I uh, can't remember which, like, one of them the other day, they announced that you had to have 20,000 subscribers before you could do such and such. And there's another one that the thing is 30,000 subscribers. So it does matter. Please subscribe if you're interested, you know, if you're interested and click the bell thing because then you get a, a message when I make a video or when anybody else makes a video. Got a question for you. Has uh, PayPal changed their thing? Probably a lot of the others do the same thing. It's send money to family, and it's free. Or there, it was free. Um, but I just noticed last couple of days or whatever, send some money back and forth between family. Um not free. They're charging now. I did a search and I did you know I did a search on Google uh is PayPal charging now for sending money between family or whatever. Came back with like the first page was like eighteen things with different dates and they were all different, like saying, you know, saying I PayPal, you know, I can 2014 or whatever, you know, PayPal no longer charges for sending money between family and friends. And then there'll be a thing later saying, you know, they're now charging. A, and then and another thing saying, oh, they're not charging. And then another thing saying, uh, they're, so I don't know. Uh, we just ended up paying because we didn't even know that, that things had changed. So anybody know anything about that? If so, leave something in the comment below. Um, I looked at the at their site, so I'm not sure what's going on. It says something about if you 
have a have money in your PayPal account, then you can send money to family and friends. And then it says if you or if you or if you have a linked bank account, you can. So I have a lot of times I don't have money in the PayPal account, but I have a linked bank account and everything just you know has kind and I have sent money to family before not having money in the PayPal account, but it just takes it out of the uh, linked bank account. So I don't know if something has changed or not. If you know anything, leave a comment. I'll probably do some more research on the thing. Um, also, it has been so long since I've had a payment from PayPal. It says 28 days. Let's do the last 90 days. I think I am about due for, and I think they pay about the middle of the month. So, but I could be, so it says estimated, you know, 110. If it's like $99, I won't get anything for another, another month. Anybody remember, I think it's like, isn't it the 15th? I even went to my bank account and looked at the uh, thing, and I didn't, I didn't see where there was a payment from them within the last three or four months. I don't know. The YouTube premium amount is um, increasing slightly. That's if you're, I think they now call it YouTube premium. It used to be, I think, YouTube red, I believe. And that's where I think if you pay, is it $10 a month? you get a bunch of benefits and you get no advertising in the in the video. Um, no advertising in the video, which is nice in itself. And then you get, I don't know, YouTube music and other stuff. But um, what's nice for YouTube providers who are making YouTube's videos is that money is that you pay X amount of it is taken and directed and it's directed to everybody. It doesn't matter whether you are at the level where you get um, whether you're approved for so Anyway, it's been going up. Uh, it's been going up steadily a little bit. Um, you still using this microphone? It's working okay. I'm not talking into it. Oh man, too close. Too close. Back up the camera. I was doing video years and years before there was a YouTube. And uh, I would have the camera mounted up in a corner of my room so you could see the entire room. And I had, I ran it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'd just go to bed. Camera be showing the camera would be showing the room. I'd get up in the morning, camera would be showing the room. I was uh, doing that. Okay, I was doing that during 2000 for sure because I remember I was, uh, I worked the 2000 census. So I was sitting there doing paperwork. The camera couldn't show it. I mean, the camera wasn't showing any confidential information or anything. But I was doing paperwork and being paid and I was sending out video. Ugh. OK. 
Okay, I thought I should get a video out to you all. I'm not sure if I should go with adding this camera or not. I think I would, this is the only camera of my three Panasonics, of, uh, this is the only one that I can actually hook in the HDMI and uh, get what's on the screen and uh, the lens is not the best for well it's if you just want to set this you know it would be good I mean for doing YouTube videos right type of you know right uh, millimeters that you don't know I'm still very happy with my new cell phone it's all charged up almost midnight Time to send this to YouTube. Thank you very much for watching.